Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to make a card that's going to be really cool. It's going to have an inside that'll be really surprising. I hope you'll stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing I've done, I need a lot of butterflies, and I mean a lot. So uh, this is watercolor paper. It's uh, Fabriano Hot Press. I like it for stamping and for embossing. And I stamped six butterflies on this one, and I needed two more butterflies. Yeah, there's a lot of goo on them, but don't worry about that. That's not going to be in the, in the end result. And then I'm going to just stamp the last two of these. And I'm using Versa Fine Onyx Black ink, and I found in order to get a really good impression on these, because they're not foam backed, that, uh, oh, and these butterflies are from a company called Just For Fun. I have to do my elbow compression technique because they're really outlined, and I want to make sure I get a good impression. And the other thing I found, because it's watercolor paper and it's so absorbent, it requires at least two stamping of the black ink in order to get it as dark as I want it, in case you didn't know. And I want to make sure I really give these a good press. If they had foam behind them, it wouldn't be so bad. But they don't. The other thing you could do is put another thin piece of fun foam under it just so it raises it up just a little bit. Not thick enough that it raises it over the surface, but it would work a lot better for me, clearly, if I had a little bit more foam underneath. Okay, so we're going to put some clear embossing powder on this. I'm just going to kind of move it around and into my bowl. I use that um, little NyQuil cup because it really helps me to get uh, a lot of embossing powder on my image quickly. And I'm all about quick. I had already run my lovely powder brush over that so that it, no extra embossing powder flakes would be, you know, hanging out so I wouldn't have a problem with that. Just so you know. And I like to move my embossing gun back and forth a little bit. And the reason I do that, I know a lot of people have reasons, but my reason is I don't want to scorch my paper. And if you leave it in one spot very long, you could do that. And so I'm just moving it around. Hopefully you can see this until the image turns shiny. And then I'm done. That bottom of that little fella isn't done. And that's all of them. Okay. What my plan is for this card is that I'm going to have one um, uh, one butterfly on the front and six on the inside. And I know you're thinking, geez, six is a lot. Yeah, six is a lot, but wait till you see what we're going to do with those six. That's the exciting part. I did see this in a video by a Stampin' Up! rep. I don't remember her name, but I will find it and put it in the information below because she was a genius. Hers isn't going to be as detailed as mine, but then again, you know I am half crazy. Okay, more than half crazy. And uh, decided I needed to go color it up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use these Derwent watercolor pencils, and I'm going to be coloring my butterflies with them, and I want each um, butterfly to be a little bit different than the last, and um, I think I'm going to do the top one in like blues, greens, and yellows, and then the bottom one in uh, the, like purples, reds, something, I don't know. I haven't decided yet, really. You know me. I'm flying by the seat of my pants, as always. Now, Rich is going to fast forward this because you know my system, and that is I color slow. What I want to do, though, is because these are watercolors, you don't have to be really, really um, seriously good at coloring. The embossing powder will make it sure, since it's raised, that the uh, pigment from these pencils doesn't run amok and uh, go through, go, go to the other areas. So even if you did use colors that weren't color buddies on the color wheel, as Lindsay would say, um, it wouldn't make a difference because they should stay where they are. And I'm coloring uh, some of these pieces exactly the same so that I kind of have a plan 
and then I'll vary my I'll vary the colors as I it's not very colored as I go and that'll be my uh, system so um, let me just color away and I'm only going to make you watch me color one of these my Royal and Langnickel brush. It's a very, very fine brush. I want to be able to uh, make sure I don't color outside of my lines if I can avoid it. And I have a little thing of water right here so that I can make sure I have the tools to liquefy. That's the first one. I think the battery cut out on the camera for the other one so I apologize for that you didn't get to see the rest of that one be colored in so let me just do this other one in purples and pinks and oranges All right, we're going to cut these two out, and then we'll be right back. I think I'm going to use this Perfect Plum. I get a piece of scrap paper. My embossing folder that I used is a leafy one. It's from the Couture Creations line called Magical. I probably would have called it Leaves, but who am I? I thought leaves would be kind of fun with, you know, with a butterfly, but, you know, I'm going to open it so that I only get ink on the part I want and I'm just going to lightly go across my pad on my these Stampin' Up! ink pads I'll tell you the thing I don't like about them over time and I think they probably fixed this because I have the really old pads but uh, the problem that you have with these old pads is they get uh, like concave in the middle it's crazy. It drives me nuts. I'm going to use some ribbon because I want to hide that, but also I thought it would be kind of fun to put my butterfly up on some ribbon maybe. Well, who knows. I kind of like this ribbon. It's really pretty and delicate. And mm, I just can't decide. I have another sentiment that I really like that says, if nothing ever changed, there would be no butterflies. I like that one. Maybe I'll use that instead. It's bigger and will take up more space. Plus, the woman I'm making this for is one of my viewers. And I asked her what she wanted, and she said she really liked the cards I made with the um, sea life on it. And I lost my inspiration for sea life and I needed something what, that was symmetrical and you'll see why in a second and I hope she likes this better than than the sea life one. Okay, okay, heat set this. For some reason this paper did not want to cut. I don't know why. It just had a mind of its own, and let me just tell you, its mind and mine were not in sync. I'm going to put some blue dots there. And I uh, screwed that up too. I'm going to put some blue dots there. I'm having some blue dot moments here. 
There's that one. Ooh, got some stuff I need to trim off. Okay, push that down and pull that. Of course, it's not straight. Why would it be? Know what I mean? My paper didn't want to cut. I broke my vagabond. Things are just not going well today. Now I'm going to put something heavy on this. Whoop. I'll put a little block there and a little block there. Okay. Now I have my sentiment that's right there and I have seven, count them, seven of these. I think I'm going to use the one that has orange on the front. Now I did these all different colors as I said but in the same kind of color families so that they aren't exactly the same. Now I'm going to show you my plan for these. I'm going to get my scoreboard and I'm going to measure one of them and they are uh, about two and three quarters inches so let's see. I'm going to try and score down the center of my butterfly like that. We're going to score all of our pieces down the center and then flip it over. And if you were on my side, you'd be able to see you can see the, the score mark on the front. So let me finish these and you won't have to watch because it's, you know, it's slow and painful. Now before I glue these down, I'm going to get a black marker. I'm going to go around all my edges so that you can't see any white on the edges of my butterfly. First thing we're going to do is the front of our card because that's the easiest part. And I just put a foam square behind my butterfly and I bent it so that I can put it right there and then I'm going to put the sentiment that is swirly but so it's like the path the butterfly took I'm going to put that right there if nothing ever changed there would be no butterflies don't know who said that but that's the statement and then on the inside, okay, now let me show you how we're going to do this. Remember we, we um, scored all of our butterflies. I'm going to fold them so that they're all straight and, and they're basically so they're each centered. Okay, so I'm going to glue this one, you're only going to glue the outer edge like that. And I'm going to glue this one to it. And I'm going to hold them in place. And actually, I'm going to put a clothespin on the first one. Now, if mine don't line up perfectly, what I'm going to do is after I'm done gluing them, I'm going to put more black marker around the outside edges because I want to make sure they're lined up perfectly. And if they can't, I mean if they aren't lined up perfectly, then that's what we're going to have to do to fix it. And again, on the outside edge, you want to make sure that's well adhered to its buddy. scissors and trim off like if I have a piece that's really off like this one is I'm just gonna cut a little bit off Let's see that one has a big chunk right 
there. And then this one. There. I'm going to get my marker. You want to make sure that your edges, like right here, you see that spot where you can see the white? You don't want that. In this spot right here where you can see white, we're going to get rid of all of these spots. So I had an issue where my original background, which was this lighter purple color, the paper I think was old and it cracked in the in the um, binding, well, I don't know, the crease, that's what we'll call it, and um, that made it so I had to go with a different color background, so I added this apricot color. I don't know if it's perfectly good or I don't know, but anyway, so I thought what I would do is enter a sentiment on the back, and this is when I bought at a garage sale that um, I made my own little stamp for the top that said what, you know, what it says underneath, but I put it on upside down. So I always have to be careful of that so that I know that this is the proper way to stamp it. So I think we're just going to put a banner on our card instead since the first round of embossing did not play well with others. I don't know what the difference was between the first time and the second time, but clearly um, this time when I embossed it, it looked terrible, and the other time, it's perfectly fine. These things are just a mystery to me, I'm just saying it. I kind of dig this. I might do a little banner. Uh, I'm just kind of scared to do that because, like I said, this paper does not like to cut, but we're going to see if I can get it to do something. No, I think that's good. Nobody will ever see this mess, will they? So we made our banner. And now all we're going to do is put a little bit of wet glue on it, glue it down. I could put it up on dimensionals, but I think we're going to have enough dimension going on in the inside that you haven't seen yet. That's so exciting. I can't even tell you. Okay, let's glue her down. I think that just wanted to say hello on purple really helps us with the uh, blending of the of our butterflies. Here's our butterflies, and remember I had to take them off the last card base, so there's a little weird paper here that you know I didn't really want to leave on there, but I also didn't want to destroy my butterflies. So first things first, we're going to put glue all along the side of our butterfly. that. Making sure it's got lots of glue on it. We're going to do the same with the other end of our butterfly nest. That's what I'm going to call that, just in case you wondered. And I'm going to make sure I get the whole edge. You want to make sure you have glue on the whole edge. That's crucial. So now we're going to put glue on this end of our butterflies. You want to make sure you put enough on there that it's going to hold because you're holding down your entire flock. Is that what you call them? I don't know. Your whole group of butterflies. So both ends of my butterflies are glued together. Then you're going to do this. We're going to put this butterfly down. We're going to hold it in place going to hold our whole section of butterflies down. And I want to make sure I'm pressing on all of the butterflies because I want to make sure the first one is glued down. I put a little bit more glue on this bad boy. Okay. If you don't if you don't think it's glued down enough, push on the bottom butterfly by itself. Then as quickly as you can, close your card. That's going to be the key, is holding that card shut and making sure the last butterfly that you pushed, that you have pushed down in there is attached. 
we want to make sure now when you glued it down you only glued this edge of your butterfly remember that you don't want to have glue um, on I'm going to hold them in place you don't want to have glue on uh, the rest of your butterfly because our goal here is that uh, they will close back up and that they'll stay in place let me make sure this is well glued down I'm just holding it a second longer here's what I was talking about this paper you see this this is when I tried to trim it I could not get that to trim because the paper just curled on itself instead of trimming. Let's see if I can get it from this angle. It just doesn't like to play with me. It's all I'm saying. Okay. So here's the inside. Mm, I'm gonna grab some of my rubber, my peg stamps and see if I have some butterflies. I'll be right back. So since I have a big bunch of butterfly stamps I figured why not color them right so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna use the um, Simon Says Stamp it's an intense black ink and I'm gonna make sure before I start that I make all make sure that all of my peg stamps are trimmed because if the edges are um, not like if you're if you're if your stamped image doesn't go all the way to the edge you need to trim the edges or you might get a little black line in it so I want to really quickly do that our first step is we're going to stamp a few butterflies around I have this one that's from basket of flowers uh, this one that's a pretty dragonfly large butterfly and this is a four dot butterfly I'm not sure what that means. I don't know. I wrote myself a note, but I didn't know what it meant. So I'm going to stamp the biggest one first. You should always stamp your biggest element. Whenever you're doing something like this, you always want to stamp your biggest element first. Alright, so now I'm going to reach fast for this and I'm just going to paint these up. I'm going to paint the, um, the, the one that's upside down. I'm going to paint it in purples and then I'm going to paint the uh, bigger, other big one in pinks and we'll go from there. These were in the markers I used were Studio 71s and they are hmm, I don't see the numbers on them. Three zero zero three eight three nine zero and three zero zero three eight three eight seven. That's those. Then I'm going to do the purple in the other bigger ones. I'm going to try this LV2 Spectrum Noir. I have lots of markers, so I'm going to try them all.
okay? I hope it is. I mean, obviously when you close it, it's going to be uh, iffy because, I mean, it's going to be very thick. That's how thick it's going to be closed. But here's our card. Here's the open card. I think it's cute. I hope you do too. I think it's an easy card to make and it, it has a big wow factor on it. I hope that you give this a try and that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.